Okay, um, Friday, everyone. Um, and I'm going to switch gears a little bit today, uh, uh, as promised uh, and as advertised, uh, to begin to prepare us all uh, for Lent. So during the season of Lent, uh, the a view from the Sacristy Daily Devotion will continue, but, but will take on a little different flavor. Uh, today is uh, part advertisement and instruction, um, and then also a uh, plea to, to, to sort of uh, think about things as, as we prepare for Lent and uh, Easter, which is, which is just around the corner. So I'll start off by uh, talking about Ash Wednesday. What is Ash Wednesday? Uh, Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. So it's uh, 46 or 40 fasting days uh, before Easter. Uh, and as such, on the first day of Lent, uh, we come to church, uh, celebrate the Eucharist, um, and sort of show up to, to uh, show God that we are serious and that we're ready uh, to make a right start of the season, to uh, offer prayers and, and praise and thanksgivings, uh, but, but also to, to, to sort of officially begin that journey uh, as a showing of penance and, and sorrow for uh, all the ways we let down our Lord. Um, so, so we come to church there uh, for, for all those things, and there's uh, lots of prayers and, uh, and preparations and, and showing of penance and, and sorrow. Uh, during the service, there's an interesting uh, thing that, that, that we do that a lot of churches uh, do now, uh, the imposition of ashes. So I'll talk a bit about that. The, the ashes themselves uh, come from the palms that were used the previous years, Palm Sunday and Blessed. Uh, in, for, for most of Christianity, uh, the, the priest was responsible for, for uh, confecting and, and burning the, the palms and, and making the ashes, and that would be done in the sacristy oven. Uh, not many sacristies have ovens anymore. Uh, the ovens were, were used to, to uh, burn like the cotton wool that the uh, oil of unction would, would, would be on. The ovens were used to burn uh, linens that had uh, gotten worn and, and were out of use uh, and to burn other things or to deconsecrate things. So the oven uh, had a had a point and, and a purpose. It was also used to um, for the charcoal for incense and things like that. So uh, sacristies used to have a kitchen. Uh, so when I arrived here uh, more than a decade ago, I, I burned uh, the, the the palms as a good and devout priest, uh, but also discovered that one of our parishioners uh, is a magician and probably the the best. Uh, ash maker and palm burner that I've ever seen and, and uh, so you see some of the video going on now uh, and so we're very thankful to have Pete and, and Pete's uh, gift and offering of prayerfully uh, burning the palms and, and preparing the ashes for use. Uh, the practice at St. John's is, is to make sort of a paste of the ashes um, and so we do that by uh, mixing the ashes uh, that, that, that Pete prepares and confects, we, we mix those and blend those with uh, blessed or consecrated oil of the sick and, and holy water. So it makes a paste. Um, and so what, what are the what's the purpose of putting ashes on our forehead? Um, and part of that comes from, um, from, from the Bible in, in, in old times. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, you find Jonah going to Nineveh. Uh, and when he gets to Nineveh, he goes to the center of Nineveh uh, and proclaims God's judgment. Uh, the king of Nineveh, when he hears this, he is uh, upset and sorrowful, and he proclaims a fast, and he uh, puts ashes, covers, pours ashes on the heads of, of himself and everybody and demands and declares an edict that that, that will be done. There will be uh, fasting. Uh, and also the wearing of sackcloth and ashes, uh, even down to the cattle and the dogs and things like that. So, so it's a sign of, of penance. Uh, it's a sign of, of sorrow. It's, it's sort of uh, dirtying yourself uh, is a sign of sorrow to God. It, it, it also, uh, the scripture, you know, is from, uh, remember, O man, that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. So it's a reminder and a symbol of our mortality, but not to make us feel horrible and, uh, and down on ourselves, but to remind us of our, 
uh, life that comes from God and, and not from ourselves so that we will die. And the only thing lasting and eternal and uh, of value is the love of God that we have uh, for God, from God, and, and, and for others. And so it's really sort of to help us reset. Uh, so when we focus on our mortality, it's not supposed to make us sad and hopeless, but hopeful and sort of reoriented that, that hey, the only thing that really matters is, is the love and the mercy and the life that we find in God, and that is what is eternal. Uh, so we need to strip away all these other things. Um, also, with the, uh, the making of the holy water and, and the... Uh, oil of the sick or the infirm, uh, you, you also have a blessing for health uh, in, in sickness and in, in, in health of soul. And so there's a component of that. There's a healing component of that that, that kind of blends nicely with the idea of, of mortality, of our mortality. Uh, the, the sickness is, is not just for, for illnesses that are not of our doing, but also of uh, sicknesses that we have caused through our sinfulness. Um, and by that, I mean like distortion, pride, vanity, blah, 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 all that, all that sort of stuff. So, so it's a really intimate, uh, tender and meaningful act. In fact, uh, it's, it's odd, but it's one of the most beloved and important days to, to many faithful people. Um, they, they get a tremendous amount out of this action of coming to church and, and, and showing penance and receiving the ashes as a sign of mortality and penance and sorrow and also the blessing for health um, and making a right start to this season. So, so that's a little bit about, about the Ash Wednesday liturgy and where the ashes come from and, and, and what they mean and, and why we use them. So uh, I invite you to, to come to St. John's or to your church or to a church that is, that is doing that. And, and if you've never been, see, see what you think about it. Um, St. John's this, this year uh, in Corona Tide, ha, where we'll have uh, three services this year. So we're adding a 7 a.m. mass that, that should be about 30 minutes long, 35 minutes long, uh, and then our 12.05 and 6. So those... That's a little bit about that. Now to prepare us for Lent, uh, Lent asks us to uh, do several things, fast, abstain, uh, also to increase our acts of charity, increase our acts of devotion, uh, do spiritual readings and, and several other things. There's a long litany and there's an email that, that, is, that is going out today as well that, that outlines all of this and, and gives you some help. Well, I, will, I want to start everybody uh, by reminding us all that the point and purpose of all these practices are to bring us closer to God, to help us in our relationship with God in Christ. So not to punish us, not to, not to uh, humiliate us or, or things like that, but also not uh, to lose weight, not to get fit, not to do this or do that. The only point and purpose of doing any of these things is to bring us closer to God, to make our souls healthier and more fitting vessels for the presence of the Holy Spirit. So if we do these things without those intentions, it's pointless. Um, and so a lot of times, like when I fail, even if you fail in, I always talk about Oreo cookies, even if I can't give up Oreo cookies f for all of Lent, even in the failure of that, many times it brings me closer to God. Uh, my brokenness and, and lack of willpower or staying power uh, is often a wonderful reminder and uh, sign of my dependence on God for everything. So even in the failures, it can, you can come closer to God. So you, it's not like you have to successfully do these things uh, to be a good Christian or to be mature, to do this or that. The point of all of this, the point of all of this is joy and peace and, and love in our hearts and, and to bring us closer to God and, and, and to cleanse our soul of some things, uh, things that distract us. So, so like with fasting, uh, the point of fasting, again, is not to lose weight or, or things like that, but uh, our Lord said uh, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we translate those hungers uh, and those desires into in feeding on the word of God. 
Um, but but also the the fasting is to show God we're serious uh, about things and to show ourselves we're serious and to sort of push ourselves in uncomfortable places uh, and and to show self control and resolve and and things like that. Um, abstinence is, is the same way when we abstain from Oreo cookies or or tobacco or alcohol or uh, or, or watching uh, four hours of TV a day or or whatever. Uh, that's also to not to punish us uh, or to make us healthier, but it's, it's to take away a distraction, something that distracts us from the love of God or something that wastes our time uh, that, is, that, that makes us less and in making us less takes us from God. So uh, the same thing with spiritual reading uh, is not to enter school again, but to, to do things to to wake up our souls and our intellects and our minds uh, and our hearts. Okay, so same thing with taking on uh, charitable acts. You know, we don't we don't go feed the hungry or or, or help the, the less fortunate or, or whatever just to make ourselves feel better, uh, but to share God's love with them and in sharing God's love with them uh, to be filled with. God's love. So that's enough of that. I'll, I'll go into more detail on each one of those in the, in, the, in the coming days before Ash Wednesday, but I did want to give you a warning and also to, to spend some time thinking about Lent, thinking about giving yourself over to 40 days of coming closer to God. Um, and you don't have to do the, the old fashioned fast abstinence, da 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 da. You know, you can get creative with it. I just please, please, please remember that the point and purpose of these things are not punishment or things like that, but to show God we're serious, to rekindle our relationship and the joy we find in the Lord, and to bring us closer to God's grace. Um, okay, so please remember that. And and if you need to be creative, be creative. Uh, you know, take on something that brings you closer to God. Give up something that distracts you from God. Uh, use your imagination. Use what's going on in your life right now. Um, you know, and I've seen all kind of wonderful things. Uh, the wonderful thing about our particular church is, uh, is we have suggestions and things like that that allows for, for creativity. So spend uh, the weekend in, in, in thinking about it, making a plan and in preparing yourself for this. Uh, so uh, I need to as well, and I'll be doing that. So if you, if you see me around and wonder what I'm thinking about, that's what I'm thinking about. So... Uh, so there we go. So uh, please have a good weekend. Uh, please be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. Love one another and, and, and pray. Pray for our world. Pray for those who are hurting, those who are unloved and unwanted. Uh, pray for the sick and the suffering and, and pray for all those who minister unto them. So. Happy Friday, and, and God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.